Good morning and welcome back to Morsels and Motors. You join me on Sunday morning uh, on my driveway and I'm going to show you around my new purchase in just a moment. But I think there's a little bit of a story first, so let me skip back to Friday. I'm sitting here in my Mark III Fiesta outside a block of flats in North London with another Fiesta. A Mark I Fiesta that I might have just bought. Eek. But I'm really happy. It's lovely. It's beautiful. It has terrible mirrors, but it's extremely solid, which is the important thing with the Mark I Fiesta. There doesn't seem to be any rust on it at all, and I can't even see any evidence of previous rust repairs being done on it. Um, it's done sort of 65-ish thousand miles. Uh, it was owned by an elderly gentleman somewhere in northwest London, and he had to give up driving because he lost his license, and a friend of his who works for a removals company took it on and uh, put it on eBay and I found it and yeah I need to come back tomorrow to collect it. There's a slight leak in the radiator just there that needs patching up. The water is empty so I do need to kind of be careful that it hasn't overheated. A new coil, battery's flat, getting some jump leads. There's a little bit of rust just on that front cross member but it's not too bad. Inside of the wings are all original. No sign of any repairs anywhere on the car, to be honest. So now you know what it is. Now, I was going to film a collection caper yesterday um, because the plan was I had ordered a new radiator from Euro Car Parts that was supposed to be delivered by nine o'clock on Saturday. So nine o'clock came around, went to Euro Car Parts. They said, oh, it wasn't in the delivery that arrived this morning. Thank you. So we bought some Radweld and some putty uh, and went down to London anyway, because we thought, you know what, we've invested in this now, the car is full of tools. Called the seller as I was leaving Halfords here, having stocked up on a few parts, and uh, said I'd be there in about an hour and a half. And he said, absolutely fine, give me a call about 20 minutes before you get here. No problem, I did that, he didn't answer when I got there. Um, he didn't really answer and managed to get through a couple of times and he kept saying, oh, I'll be there shortly. I'm just working, doing a few things, doing a few drop offs. Anyway, four hours later, he turned up with the key, uh, by which point we were really quite hacked off. But never mind. It's OK. But you can see why we probably didn't do any filming. Anyway, it goes from bad to slightly worse. Uh, I was assured the car was a runner. Uh, he said he'd been driving around in it. When we finally got the keys to be able to actually get into the bonnet and try starting it, put in a new battery, we plugged up the radiator um, so that it would at least hold some coolant and we started it and it started fine and it ran and then it cut out after about 30 seconds. And then that repeated and then it wouldn't start at all. And uh, yeah, so we did the usual checks. We kind of cleaned up the distributor cap, uh, rotor arm, took out the spark plugs, cleaned those up. They looked a little bit sooty. Then I took the air filter off and I could see that there was no fuel in the carburetor. There's no smell of petrol, even though we've been cranking it and cranking it and cranking it. Um, took off the fuel hose going into the carb and that was full. So I think the fuel pump is working, but the um, carburetor is blocked in some way, shape or form. So at that point, it was getting dark. I'd been in London for hours and hours and hours, just wanted to get home. So we called the recovery people who uh, fantastically came to our rescue within about an hour and drove me and the car home. And that brings us to Sunday morning. So let me show you around the car. Right, so there we are. This is the first time that I've actually had a look at it properly. So you're getting a live view of kind of what the car's really like. Because yesterday we spent most of the time under the bonnet and the day before uh, when I actually vi viewed the car, it was raining. So uh, <laughs> hasn't had the best of starts. So this is a 1981 Ford Fiesta Mark I. The trim level is L. This is not a base model, I repeat. Klaxon, this is not a base model. Although it was registered in February 81, I think this is a 1980 model year car um, because of the trim uh, that's available on it. And this is a London car. It came from where GH plate is, which is somewhere in South London. The tax disc says barking. Uh, that was last taxed in 2013, last MOT'd in 2014, so that's when it was last on the road. And yes, the big elephant in the room is, these are probably the world's most revolting door mirrors. And uh, yes, I need to go and find immediately the correct pair of chrome 
Mark 1 Fiesta L door mirrors as soon as possible. Having a look around the car, you can kind of see that uh, this car has slightly been dragged backwards through Halfords in the 1980s. So we've got those uh, funky door protectory things. We've got an aftermarket locking fuel cap. If I know my Ford trim, I think that bottom stripe is the correct sole stripe for an L for 1980, but that the dealer would have added these, this kind of collection of stripes above, um, which is quite fun. Very sadly, there's a bit of a dent there, but everything that's on the car that's kind of been damaged at some point have always been touched up, so it's not rusted, which is brilliant. And you can even see here uh, where there must have been a tiny bit of rust bubbling at the corner there. Um, the original owner has kind of filled it in with some paint uh, where the stripes were and everything, just so it matches up, which is really sweet, I think. We've got number plates etched into the windows on all of the windows. So they're original, Fiesta 1.1L. XGH678W. It's my second GH car. Uh, PGH is also uh, from the same area. I love the Mark 1's uh, kind of reversing and fog lights because the reversing light wasn't mandatory at all, um, so they didn't put them in the main cluster, and the fog light is only for certain markets, so again, they didn't bother putting them in the main cluster. There are a few little scabs just inside the bumper there where it's been touched up, but it doesn't seem to have rusted, so that's good. Looks like the bumper may have had a very slight little knock there in the back. And it's a pretty similar story on this side. There's a few kind of um, scratched touches up there. There's some touches up of uh, the stripes over there again. And we've got some more Halfords accessories and a revolting door mirror. At the front, it's also incredibly solid. Um, these rust so badly around the uh, front wing here and the headlight, there's nothing there at all. Uh, this seam often rusts, there's nothing there. The valance seems really, really solid. Only other little touch of rust is kind of here. There's a little bit of surface rust just inside the scuttle, um, and I'm sure that can be dealt with. But we're missing a cap for that wiper. That's uh, not the end of the world, certainly. And more Halfords bling. We've got some uh, window tint up at the top there. I don't know whether you can just about see. Uh, sort of stick-on tint. Okay, you've held down this, this long. Let's show you inside it. We reveal a world of red. Oh yes, we have a red hound's tooth. Isn't it just fabulous? I adore it. Look at it. It's in really good condition apart from this kind of little bit of wear here. That's a bit of a shame. And there's a little tear in the driver's seat. I'm not sure what I'll do whether to, to rear upholster it or, or what. Um, I'll consider that at some point, who knows. So yeah, we have red door cards, this kind of deep kind of cherry red. It's really rather lovely. Um, with a big door pocket and an armrest, because this is L, we're in luxury. We get a side air vent that would not be there on a lower spec. On the dash, it's uh, 65,000 miles, I think it's done, 65,390. And I've got no reason to think that it's 165, because, I mean, look at the car, it wouldn't have survived that much. Being a London car, it hasn't been used that much. The pedals all looking really good. Nick, having a seat into it, we've got kind of the centre console controls. We don't have a cigarette lighter because it's not posh enough for that. Hazards, fan. I've never seen fan on a rocker switch before. Strange. So it must be a one speed fan. Heat control, distributing control. What's that? That must be rear squirter, heated rear window, a blank and the fog light, I think. We have a big ashtray here, ooh, which is full of fuses and possibly some points. Excellent. Kind of a big open glove box, which has it got anything interesting in it? No idea what those are. They, oh, they, some, they look like mirror gaskets for something or other. What's that? Some sort of blanking plug. Got this perforated headliner. Front seat belts only, not rear, because early 80s. Let's get into the back. Oh, this is a bit stiff. Oh, not many people have gone into the back of this car. <laughs> seat mechanism needs greasing. Right, let's move these bottles of water out of the way. Last time I was in the back of a Mark 1 Fiesta was probably in the mid 90s, because my grandmother had a, uh, a beige one, uh, an A-Reg popular, and that didn't have rear seat belts either. I was kind of horrified as a kid. Um, and it had vinyl seats, which I really hated. This is a much nicer upholstery, this um, uh, hand's tooth, but actually it's, it's different to what I was expecting. 
it's more of a nylon. Um, I was expecting it to be kind of a brushed cloth or something, but it's not. It's kind of a very 70s nylon. Um, it kind of makes me like it even more. I'm not sure what that grill does. I think it might be an air extraction, but then there's air extraction up there, so I'm not sure. It could be for aftermarket speakers or something like that, but uh, anyway, I should investigate why there are two screws in there at some point. But I mean, look, I mean, it's just delicious. Red vinyl over the wheel arch here. So nice, red vinyl door cards here in the back with a little armrest cut out. Oh, it's so good and I need such a clean, it's horrible. Right, because 80s Ford, you need to have a key to open the boot. There we go, lift it up. Oh, we're missing the cap there on the wiper as well, okay. Tailgate struts are good, that's going up quite well. Um, the early pre-facelift Mark 1s have this really flat parcel shelf that's it's made of, oh, it's like a hardboard, I think. But yeah, the later ones have the, the more moulded one. Anyway, right, this is the boot. Um, we've got some stuff in it and I haven't really properly looked through it, so let's have a look. First of all, we have a spare grill. I don't think there's anything wrong with a grill on the car or anything wrong with this, so I'm not sure why we have a spare. Fuel can. Excellent. Always needed a spare fuel can, or four. Uh, we have a hose manual, which is good because I don't have one. We have some audio guide and owner's guide for a Fiesta that is definitely not from this vintage. What Fiesta is that from? Oh, that's for a Mark IV or V. Okay, 1998. Yeah, that's uh, not relevant to this car. Okay, in this bag we appear to have, ooh, a spare fog light. Interesting. Uh, that's a gasket for it. That looks like, and that's a cloth. And that looks like a headlamp, maybe, from a Fiesta T-Reg. Cool. And what's in this box? Uh, that looks like some sound deadening material that must have been pulled away from somewhere in the car. Okay. Oh, I just got excited for a second there. I saw a chrome mirror, but they're not the right mirrors for a Fiesta. Oh, I think the gaskets inside the car would match these. So I think these mirrors um, were on the car at some point, but they're definitely not the right ones for a Mark I Fiesta. Do worry that there'll be billions of holes in the doors, but um, that's a problem for a Sean of another day. I see more Fiesta T-Reg parts. They look like rear lights. Yeah, they're in good condition as well. I don't know why they exist. Oh, and I think there are front indicators there underneath as well. Oh, what's that? Oh, number plate lights as well. Okay, cool. From the Fiesta T-Reg. Oh, our original owner stocked up on some spares, didn't he? Shame he didn't get mirrors as spares. This is really genuinely exciting because I've never looked through these before. Uh, that is... That's a water pump. Is it for a Mark I Fiesta? I mean, I guess it might be. Interesting. It also looks new. So, I'll probably fit that. Cool. We do have a cooling system issue, so... <laughs> Uh, oh, that is a coil. It's the old coil, the original, I think. What else we've got? Oh, another bit of ignition components. What's that? Uh, can't see. I mean, it's either a um, points or condenser. Some window winders. Ah, they're cracked. The original window winders. Oh, I think that blank that we found in the glove box might be for that bit there. Uh, that one isn't cracked. Um, seems okay. Uh, what's in here? Oh, hello. We have a an address here. Maybe that's the um, owner, Mr. Martin, was the original owner. I don't know. This is from 1989. Highbury N5. I think that might be where the car lived most of its life. Interesting. Okay, let's have a look what's inside here. Hmm. I don't think anything to do with a Fiesta. They look like little components for some sort of machinery. Okay. Well, we'll put those back, but I think that certainly gives us a little tiny clue as to the provenance of this car in that it might have been owned by a Mr. Martin. 
Okay, and then, oh, we have another headlight. Hopefully this is the other side from a Fiesta T-Reg. Cool, one spark plug, a cloth, oh, more spark plugs and a cloth. Well, that's it, contents of my boot. Hope you enjoyed that. I think I better show you the boot floor now, hadn't I? So on a Mark 1 Fiesta, you have these kind of hardboard floors which have Velcroed in place. And we have an extremely clean rust-free boot floor. They always go in that corner just there. This looks super, super solid, um, which I'm really delighted about. That's the jack over there. Let's get the other side up. I'll get out of the car actually. And again, super solid. One question I have is that, so the L spec has a black rocker panel from factory, but I don't know whether it extends all the way to the door rubber like it does on this car. It kind of looks like factory paint if you look at the edges, but I don't know. Um, is there any experts who might be able to tell me uh, whether it should just be straight along that edge and white on here, or whether it should be black all the way across? I mean, I'm, I kind of hate the black. It makes it look like it's been welded and badly repaired, but it really hasn't. 1980 on that uh, seat belt. Anyway, the reason I'm in here is let's get the uh, bonnet open, shall we? There we go. The Beast. The 1.1 version of the Kent engine with all 53 horsepowers. Uh, only got the one litre in that. Um, the L gives you a brake servo, which is jolly exciting. And as you can see in this engine bay here, Again, it's never been repaired. It's a bit dirty and needs a really, really good scrub clean, but it's in remarkably good condition. They rust in that back corner really badly. They rust here behind the headlights really badly. Um, and there's nothing here at all. There's a few, must have been some specs there that have been touched up by the owner. It's a similar story here on the other side, all very solid. And then you can see the um, VIN plate it shows that it was built in Ford of Spain. So it's built in Valencia. So what's the plan? Well, uh, I am going to uh, just give it a bit of a restoration, really. It was last on the road in 2014. Everything mechanical on it looks like it hasn't been touched since at least 2014 and probably about 10 years before then. Um, so I am going to go through every system on it, replace everything in the cooling system, ignition system, fuel system, the car needs a rebuild, I'm pretty sure, um, and probably needs new tires. So I'm hoping you will join me for that journey. I'm going to film it and uh, do a little restoration series on it uh, where uh, I go through all the stuff that needs changing on this car and get it to run um, because yeah it doesn't run. Uh, it runs for 30 seconds then it cuts out. He said to me yesterday that he'd recently put fuel in it and I wonder whether him putting fuel in it has stirred up some crap in the bottom of the tank which has then blocked the carburetor because basically we were cranking it over and there was just no smell of fuel. Anyway that's a problem for another day. I'm not doing any of that work today. That also means the tank probably needs to come out, doesn't it? This car was listed really badly. It was listed as a toy, uh, which is why no one else found it. And I found it. Actually, I'll give credit to my friend Oliver. He found it. And I uh, contacted the seller and asked to go and view it. But literally, I don't think anyone else has seen it. I know you're going to ask me how much I paid for it. It was £3,100, which I think is a very fair price for a Mark 1 Fiesta in this condition. Um, I've seen them go for a lot higher. I've seen barn fines go for about three grand. Uh, this is not a barn fine condition. This is kind of semi-roadworthy condition. It just needs a mechanical overhaul. There's nothing wrong with the bodywork. It's in really good nick. It needs a good polish, it needs trim sorted out, cleaning it'll be rejuvenated and come back to life. So there you go. Uh, that's me prattled on for far too long. I hope you've enjoyed this little video and I do hope you'll join me for the journey in rejuvenating this fab little Fiesta back on the road. See you soon. Bye.